Greetings from Tokyo, my dear, dear friends. This is Daisuke, and I am very, very, very happy today because we are joined by a very special guest, a friend of this channel, and we have gotten to know each other through our mutual love of film. And he is also a great film enthusiast, a great observer, and uh, a wonderful critic and uh, professional uh, film enthusiast extraordinaire. And I'm looking forward to speaking with our guest today, Mr. Whale Khairi. So Whale, thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, thank you, uh, you know, thanks, uh, thanks for having me. It's, a, it's an honor. Um, you know, you're being very generous with, uh, with that intro and I hope I live up to it. Um, and, uh, you know, thanks for, um, for, for all the content that you share with us online. You know, it's uh, always very insightful and I love uh, watching your videos and your reflections on, on films from uh, the Criterion channel and otherwise as well. So thanks for having me. Oh, no, no, you're very kind, my friend. And believe me, the pleasure is all mine. We've had, or I've had the great uh, honor of uh, speaking with you and discussing with you online and through comments about cinema and hearing your recommendations and insights. And I, uh, through that, have gotten to know a little bit about you and your very interesting background and uh, your dealings with cinema. And so I look forward to this very much. I suppose uh, before we get into our conversation in earnest, may I please uh, just ask you to maybe introduce yourself to, uh, to us, anyone who might be meeting you for the first time, Whale. Uh, could you please let us know a little bit about who you are and your uh, dealings with cinema? Yes, of course. Um, uh... So uh, I'm, uh, my name is Well Khairi, I'm from Egypt and uh, I write uh, film reviews um, on my website, you know, the cinephilefix.com. Uh, um, and there's also like an Instagram page for it. Uh, they're mostly like uh, short form uh, film reviews. Um, I also like uh, to write uh, for a number of different publications uh, around the world, but uh, um, the one I write on most consistently is RogerEbert.com um, as, as uh, their foreign correspondent. Um, so yeah, Roger Ebert uh, asked me to uh, uh, join his um, very diverse staff of film writers, uh, like I think around 11 years ago, and uh, I've been yeah, writing on their website ever since under their far-flung correspondence uh, section. That is amazing. And so you are a professional film critic, a writer, and you deal, of course, very extensively with the art of cinema. May I ask, uh, are there any specific areas of cinema that you find yourself focusing in on in particular? Uh, well, at first, um, when I first starting write, uh, started writing film reviews, uh, it was for a, a local uh, magazine uh, called CMAG in Egypt, and the C stood for cinema, and they used, used to like uh, distribute the, the magazine at like film cinemas in Egypt. Uh, the circulation wasn't the best, but uh, back then I had to like write about every um, single film that, that I watched. Uh, so they were mostly like new releases. Um, uh, but uh, I, think, I think that was around the time I was like studying film at uh, uh, the American University in, uh, in Cairo and, and briefly, briefly at uh, UCLA afterwards and um, 
so that was uh, uh, during like my first couple of years, I would write about everything, you know, that I watched. Um, uh, as the years go went by, I started uh, focusing more on films that, uh, that, that appealed to me more. So there were more like world cinema films or, uh, or much older films. Um, and, uh, and that's, that's like the, the type of film that I enjoy most writing about nowadays. Very interesting. And so what is your regular schedule like? Could you indicate or give us a little bit of insight into, for example, how many films you are watching in a given period of time and how much time you have between, say, watching a film and uh, producing some kind of writing or review or perspective on it? Uh, yeah, of course. Um, I, I usually watch at least, at least one or two films a day. Um, uh, usually, I like to give myself time um, to like. I, I like to let the film um, like linger in my thoughts before actually writing anything about it. Um, uh, yeah, I, I take a lot of notes when 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 they're like more in depth analyses. Um, so because, but but yeah, generally, I like to at least wait a few hours or maybe even a day. Um, before actually writing anything, because sometimes, you know, the more uh, the, the film lingers in your thoughts, the more you start to admire it more and, uh, and vice versa. You know, sometimes uh, the, the second you watch a film, you're in that high, but, you know, a couple of hours later, you know, you're, you're, you, you might be like over it. Um, so, yeah, I think like, giving at least some time is always a good measure to, uh, um, to see the films, you know, lasting power and um, yeah. That's very interesting. I, I never thought of it that way before until you were speaking of it right now, which is the amount of time and maybe you need time and to find the right period of time in order to say be as objective as possible in terms of uh, your approach to, to, uh, to a film before you watch it. That's very interesting. That's very interesting indeed. Do you find that when you write something about a film that maybe after you've written it, when you say visit something you've written before, do you find that your perspectives on that same film are generally as you wrote them, or do you find that sometimes after time has passed, your view on that film might change? No. And sometimes about the same um, film uh, on multiple different occasions, uh, um, like throughout time, I think we as human beings evolve, uh, you know, our film, our experiences, um, um, uh, change and so the, when we watch a film a second time we are really watching it with all of the new experiences that we went through we went through from that first initial viewing and uh, uh, up to that point of that second viewing so our perspective on it uh, might change uh, and uh, you know something might click um, with you more so uh, so yeah, definitely it, it, it could change, of course, and my admiration for a film might um, uh, go up or down, you know, depending on who I am at that given um, moment in time. I love that answer very much. Uh, at, I, I really do, because you talk about we as human beings and how we evolve within yes. a given space of time and, you're and based on our experiences. You're absolutely right. Um, before we get any further too, may, may I ask the, the, the question, which is uh, for you, uh, what are some of your uh, uh, favorite films or favorite filmmakers of the moment? 
And when I say of the moment, please feel free to interpret that in any way you feel appropriate. Right now, what are some films or filmmakers that are uh, exciting you uh, as a film enthusiast and as a, a critic and writer? Uh, you mean like current filmmakers or uh, filmmakers in uh, general? In um, general, in general, where when I yes, so when I say you can interpret it any way you like, yeah. you can say current or you can be how you feel now. <laughs> um, well, uh, right now I'm like super. I've been super into, of course, the films of uh, Yasujiro Ozu, um, Edward Yang. Um, Kazao, I, I hope I'm pronouncing his name right, Kazao Hara, uh, who actually I was introduced to uh, through your uh, YouTube channel, so uh, uh, I have you to thank, uh, thank for that. Um, but yeah, um, um, and of course, films of, you know, there's so many, there's so many answers that I can give, you know, the film, uh, John Carpenter, uh, um, you know, the early Spielberg films, you know, um, like my love for cinema started at a very, very young age. You know, I've always um, loved going to the movies or buying films that I could like revisit at a click of a button. So it's almost um, impossible to really um, give an answer without regretting uh, leaving some names out, you know, Tarkovsky, um, Terence Malick, uh, uh, there's so, so many options to choose from. But yeah, films, you know, are like gateways to other worlds and other lives. And uh, when we choose to watch a film, we, uh, we deceive our own perception of time. Uh, it, it gets disrupted through uh, the magic of editing, you know, flashbacks and jump cuts and, and, and and dissolves later and it almost you know creates this uh, impression that you went through an experience so so many different directors gave me uh, so many different experiences uh, and you know in a matter of hours you can experience so much that you normally would during that span of time so um, and that to me is really you know the um, the magic of cinema at the end of the day you know my life has always been limited to my own uh, personal experience of it, uh, but uh, films allowed me to uh, break free and uh, you know uh, understand what it's like to experience um, something that I normally would never experience, um, and and sometimes these experiences can be as real as anything um, you go through in in real life. So yeah, growing up, movies have always been there for me, and I've there's so many options to choose from. So, um, like, on on the days where where I'd feel down, for example, I'd watch uh, you know feel good movies uh, like Jimmy Stewart uh, movies like Harvey or it's it's a wonderful life or the shop around the corner, you know Buster Keaton films and Charlie Chaplin. Um, films always um, put me in a good mood. Uh, when I get like Hitchcock, the films of Hitchcock, of course, uh, just, they were super suspenseful and loved watching them. Um, and I still do love watching them over and over and again. They're some of the most rewatchable uh, films. Um, you know, I, Rosemary's Baby is a, a film that I loved watching uh you know it really scared me the first time i watched it and um and but yeah like if if you're talking about like uh filmmakers that have had an, some sort of an impact um on who i am i think yasujiro ozu and maybe luis bonuel would be the the two that i would uh select that's that. I, I feel like I, I might regret, uh, you know, just uh, to, um, leaving so many others out, but I love, you know, so many different filmmakers. Oh, my friend, I, I apologize for the question. I know 
when you say you might regret leaving out films that or filmmakers that you wouldn't name, I understand exactly what you say. So I apologize for that very broad question, but you handled it magnificently. And I love that phrase that you give, which is um, deception of one's perception of time, right? And how we yeah. dis- how it cinema is, is in many ways a magical way to, in essence, manipulate time to the point where we might feel a whole lifetime of emotions if it's done in a way that we are engaged in the film. We can feel a lifetime of emotions within the, the running time. And I never yeah. thought of it that way until you mentioned it, but it's almost like there is this idea in uh, uh, maybe in a kind of uh, uh, maybe philosophical view, and I'm being very over, overly simplistic here, but there's this idea, of course, about one of the objectives of, of uh, I don't know, maybe human existence or one of the, the urges or, or, or wants or needs of human existence is the idea of some kind of feeling of maybe living forever or, and inherent in that is the idea of manipulation of one's perception of time. If we can feel in a way something that is maybe more infinite than how we actually perceive time in, in the real world. I think that goes in some way towards some maybe inherent or fundamental feeling about maybe, I don't know, wanting to live forever or wanting to have some kind of feeling of liberation on that and that uh, score. And so I never thought about it until you mentioned that right now. Very, very profound, my friend. Very Thanks, profound Paul. indeed. Yeah, I think, uh, I think you, you said it perfectly, you know, um, we, we, our time on this earth is very limited. So films allow us to like experience so much within a very condensed uh, period. Uh, and, and film lovers in general, I think are very, very curious human beings. You know, we like to explore uh, different cultures, different uh, uh, um, uh, aspects about society and uh, the the nature of uh, humanity in general. So, uh, and even sometimes just to be entertained. But I think film lovers in general are like so uh, curious, and it's almost like we're in in, in one in in several ways explorers. You know, trying to uh, gain as much knowledge as we can from uh, um, different parts of the world. So. Um, and films allow us to do that, so it's uh, it's it's uh, it's really the magic of cinema, and that's exactly why I was drawn to cinema in the first place. Well said again. Uh, I love this explorers. Yes, the exploration, the discovery. What a what a great perspective. And you you mentioned, of course, you mentioned your own. Uh, your own, say, uh, early discoveries and early beginnings uh, in terms of watching films from a young age. And you mentioned a few examples there. Uh, Returning to this point or this topic, I'd like to ask you now, uh, what, you mentioned a few already, but what were some of those moments, cinema-related moments that you experienced growing up that you could say were very influential on you uh, in terms of helping you become the film lover that you are today. What were some very important cinema, maybe films that you saw or cinema related moments that you experienced that uh, you were growing up? Uh, and w- what, what was that journey? What were some of the, 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 the touchstone moments for you? in your own cinema journey uh, back in the, the early days, as it were, for you? Um, I think the one that really started it all for me was uh, um, Jaws. Um, I, I watched that at a very young age. Uh, my dad, it was back, back in like the 
uh, 90s, it was very hard for me to uh, um, watch certain films because we, they weren't widely available. But my dad, when he'd like travel abroad, he'd uh, uh, bring back some um, v VHS tapes. And I be instantly, be one of them was, of course, Jaws. And I, I watched it so many times that I wore out like the, the actual tape. And um, yeah, I think, I think as kids, we have uh, this hunger for, uh, uh, you know, imagination and wonder. So we tend to be uh, drawn towards these great spectacles like Jaws and uh, Jurassic Park or Star Wars for some um, and during my childhood, uh, Jaws was the film that really did it for me. And uh, as I as I grew, my my appreciation for it only um, grew as well. You know, um, it's such a great film. You know, and and on you know on the surface, uh, the film is you know about these guys going. Um, uh, to hunt a shark to uh, that's disrupting you know the tourism tourism uh, business in uh, Amity Island, but you know beneath the surface surface it's about so much more you know um, because at the end of the day you have these characters who uh, who go out of their comfort zone to uh, to kill a shark and uh, but. Uh, uh, but they're, they're actually facing their demons as well. So you have, for example, like Chief Brody has a, a, a fear of swimming, which was developed uh, uh, from a near drowning experience as a child, you know, and he goes out there and faces his uh, fears and eventually, you know, um, overcomes it and even swims back to shore, uh, you know, Quint, has this fear of sharks in general, and uh, from his, you know, past experiences uh, in the Indianapolis. Um, so it's really, it's not just about, you know, these characters facing a shark, but they're, uh, they're also facing their own demons. And, um, and so it's, it's, so this idea of facing your trauma, I think really um, had a huge impression on me. As a, uh, as a as a child then um, so that was definitely one um, that uh, you know had the lasting impression on me uh, John Carpenter's the thing was another of course um, I think it's yeah, I, I might even yeah, consider it to be the most entertaining and rewatchable horror film I've ever seen uh you know the the practice practical effects are alone and this picture are second to none but what really separates his film from uh, from you know other monster flicks out there is what it says about the human psyche and um uh your paranoia and you know the most nerve uh, or, or terrifying thing about the thing has nothing to do with uh, with the actual creatures, the creature in the film, but how uh, characters react to it. Um, so that was another one that really uh, had a an effect on me. I think as I um, as I like got older and my uh, taste, I think my taste for cinema naturally like evolved. Um, and it's, you start getting introduced to uh, um, some some of the more you know uh, like the giants of cinema, more or less. Like, like uh, of course, Carpenter and Spielberg are you know uh, huge figures in cinema. But I'm talking about like uh, uh, directors that were uh, um, maybe more intellectually stimulating like uh, Luis May maybe Bonuel or, uh, you know, his film, I watched The Exterminating Angel and uh, the film had a huge effect on me as well. You know, it made me think about the so uh, think about, you know, so many important issues uh, around the world, like uh, the social divide and um, how you should always put yourself, you know, in the shoes of another person before, uh, jumping uh, into any conclusion. Um, 
uh, people always talk about, you know, the shock value and surrealism behind his work. Uh, but uh, Bunuel, uh, I think, was a very empathetic uh, director as well, and he was uh, using his platform to really uh, shine the light on the struggles of uh, other people. Um, you know, it's, uh, the exterminating angel, uh, Los Olvidados, or the young and the damned, as um, the English title is called, or, you know, land without bread, um these are the films that, that uh, had a huge impact on me as i was studying film um afterwards like uh, recently the uh, the films of yasujiro ozu have had a huge effect on me as well wow thank you so much for that uh i i too am a big admirer of jaws and the thing and i was just thinking as because of your great comments for example on the thing i was just you were reminding me about how truly remarkable that film is in that uh i'll try to be as general as possible here but that film the thing is one where it involves in an essence uh, various types of monsters Right. And what we know from monster movies, generally speaking, the the formula that works is uh, that we are given as viewers, we are given information about how the monster operates. We are given information about the physics of the monster, what the monster's strengths are, the weaknesses are. And then we understand that the cast or the characters in a particular setting must do battle against the monster based on this, these laws of physics and the laws of the monster, right? And we, and we have to know what the weaknesses are, et cetera. The thing about the thing, which I think you point out so wonderfully in your comment is that it is so there are no rules, right? There are no rules in terms of the physics of the monster. And so that is a remarkable achievement that it can sustain so much tension and so much suspense, even though we are essentially given very little rules, if anything about it. We are given a few, of course. We are given a few, but there is also so much parameter as far as the, the depth and scope in which things can develop. And I think that that is also a parallel too, because I say monsters, because the other monster you, you point out is that of paranoia. And if we know anything about human paranoia, that too is, is formless, right? And if it's formless, that makes it even more dangerous. And so I, I, I didn't quite think of it in those ways until you, you, you described that film in, in that way. That's, that's really, uh, that's really quite remarkable. Yes. Yeah, and you know, as you mentioned, you know, uh, the film is really about paranoia, and 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 you know, this paranoia really feeding this ever going like uh, presence of mis mistrust among people, and I think that's something that's really timeless, and I don't think it will, um, you know, ever be a film that's dated because. You know, the thing is nothing but like a catalyst that brings out the, the monster inside of us. And uh, it's, it's about, you know, the internal conflicts that, uh, uh, that come up when paranoia uh, penetrates our psyche and the effect it has on like an entire group is, is very interesting. I was watching this, uh, I watched this uh, film. You, you mentioned earlier, like if I, uh, sometimes watch a film and then uh, my perspective on it, it changes. Um, so, so I recently watched the thing um, like, like during the pandemic and uh, it brought its themes much closer to home. You know, one of the things that um, terrified everyone when we first uh, started learning about the pandemic was that the disease was... Um, uh like you could have like asymptomatic carriers it was almost like an invisible disease and 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 this is exactly what the, uh, john carpenter's the thing is so immortal you can watch it 
you know, um, at a different, it wasn't made with that in mind, but um, uh, it can be anything, you know, it can be an alien, a disease, anything that can spread silently without detection. Um, uh, and uh, that's one of the things that will always make it a universal uh, uh, film in a lot of ways. Bravo, yes. Yes, <laughs> there is something very remarkably and fright frightening about how how relevant it is. You're absolutely right. My goodness, that is amazing. I never I never quite thought of it that way until you mentioned it just now. So you've given me so much to think about here. I'm going to have to watch this film again after we finish this. So <laughs> thank you so much for this. I love this. This is great. And I must say, uh, too, that you also mentioned uh, your studies and uh, uh, and a kind of uh, approach to cinema that continued on uh, through your studies and your education uh, leading up to the point you find yourself at right now. So uh, could you continue on with your uh, with the cinema journey? So you are going through your, maybe your studies and your academic uh, career and such. And through that experience, what were some of those other cinema discoveries and explorations to borrow your phrase? What were some of those other uh, explorations that you were making as you were progressing through and maybe approaching cinema uh, in terms of uh, a type of uh, discipline? as well as uh, relying on uh, the memories that you have. So what, what were some of those other stops along the way for you? Um, uh, yeah, when I, when I was read, like I, I would read a lot of film reviews um, as I was uh, studying uh, films and they were mostly to, um, to guide me to, you know, some of the, um, uh, more interesting films that I, I, I sometimes uh, during that time like I needed you know like a a shortcut to the good films so um so the film the film reviews that I read really helped like I used to read a lot of Roger Ebert's uh, reviews obviously because uh, his his reviews were always like listed on um the external film review section on IMDb, like the first selection usually is um, his, um, 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 his film review. So I would always click on that first one. And, you know, eventually I would discover so many different films and uh, he has like a section on his website called the great movies, uh, film reviews that, you know, films that have a high, like a high rating that he would somehow like elevate to that status of great film. So that to me was like a, uh, um, it was in many ways like uh, the Criterion Channel, uh, what the Criterion Channel is to many other people, like this uh, great selection of uh, different films from world cinema that, uh, um, uh, that I could, you know, delve into and discover. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I remember uh, during that time, I was uh, like interested in uh, even like, like my curiosity of a certain time period would, uh, would, would, would drive me towards uh, a certain um, types of films. So, and one film would lead to another and you'd, you'd start to, um, really go down that rabbit hole uh, of uh, discovering um, a lot of uh, films. You know, I, I remember being very interested in, um, you know, th that period of time with the, with with the, in in history with the witch tri trials of the 17th century, and uh, I, I discovered Hexen, um, uh, the Devils, and uh, Day of Wrath, and uh, the witch hammer. Uh, so th th that's just one example of how one film could lead 
to another and a third and and then you find yourself you know uh discovering so many different um films of that type but you know um so yeah uh, i think and of course the films of edward yang um uh a brighter summer day uh it's you know had it, it was huge for me uh the first time i watched it you know it's a major work of uh, Taiwanese cinema and uh, it's so much more you know than just you know a coming of age film about street gangs you know it's it's about so many big uh, ideas about identity and um, you know people going through an identity crisis and even just the whole nation going through an identity crisis and when I watched that film it led me to um, you know, you're watching Yi Yi, of course, and uh, you know that film is uh, another great, uh, you know, discovery. Um, you know, it's about all the little things that make you know life worth living. And uh, there's so many films, and it, it, I keep going back to Ozu, but um, uh, his films have always touched me deeply. Um, um, back then and they still do it to this day. Well done. That's great. That is really great. I, 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 <laughs> so many you've mentioned there, uh, but you mentioned two filmmakers, Edward Yang. I'm a, a, I, I admire his work so much. And you're absolutely right about the example you bring about a brighter summer day. It is about so much, and I really, I really appreciate the way you frame it in terms of the, the micro and the macro levels, in terms of the intimate experience of the characters that we meet, and also the, the the macro level implications of that film as a type of say, uh, it, it's it's a story about this particular nation or this particular uh, people or this history and it is incredibly complicated an incredibly complicated history and it's expressed in these really finely established details and it says so much about it and i am not a, a scholar or historian or expert when it comes to the history of taiwan but it, it becomes this this, uh, you're absolutely right in terms of the what it says at, all at once and the various things that it says all at once. You're absolutely right, Edward Yang. And Ozu as well, uh, you mentioned him a number of times. I'm, I must ask, what, what, was the, what were the circumstances, what were the films uh, or film or films that uh, enabled you to discover the world of Ozu? Um, I watched uh, Tokyo Story and uh, and early summer and late uh, spring. The, uh, I think uh, they were like the first uh, three films I watched to Ozu, and I instantly became, you know, in love with uh, the way he like expressed uh, grand philosophical ideas through very little moments of. Uh, and subtle and, and, and calm moments of, you know, everyday life. He was a, a very sensitive uh, filmmaker and very disciplined as well. Um, it's, his films are so uh, calculated and, and precise, you know, uh, his precision with his shots, with his shots remind me a lot of uh, musicians, you know, it's very hard to pinpoint the exact moments in his films where um, the story gets elevated to something larger than life, um, but yeah, they've all they've I've always find found his films to be uh, so profound and 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 spiritual, and they've ha helped me a great deal um, um, personally. Like uh, as I, I was going through uh, things in life, you know, I I remember uh, the first time I watched them was I watched them back to back to back around the time my 
uh, her grandfather passed away. And uh, I remember it being one of the most um, profound experiences I've, uh, I've ever uh, went through. Um, you know, it's, it really made me think about what happens uh, when you lose someone um, you, you love and how uh, the person lives in uh, your memory and the memories of uh, every person, you know, he touched uh, throughout his life. And, and Ozu had, had, had this thing of, he, he, he managed to like really, his films are, are, are very much about the transition from one uh, generation to the next. And uh, uh, yeah, his films were a, a very, very, I'm very thankful for the films of Ozu. Um, you know, they've always gave me reassurance that uh, everything will be okay at the end of the day. You know, even his films are very, um, I feel um, like bittersweet, like even, even if something uh, bad happens, it, 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 he has a way of, you know, uh, making you feel that it's okay, you know, and life just always goes on. And the theme of um, life going on is a big, big theme in all of his films. Uh, and of course, later on, I started watching more and more of his films. Uh, um, I love, I, uh, I love, I was born, but it's such an incredible uh, uh, work. I, it, might, it might be one of my favorite uh, Ozu films. Um, you know, I, I just had, I had never seen anything like that before. A film that starts as a, a, a almost a film about children. And then it's, it's some, somehow it becomes a film about adults. And uh, that shift happens so subtly and beautifully, uh, which goes back to that point I was trying to make about how you can never really pinpoint when it happens. And I've watched this film so many times, but it's, uh, it's, uh, it's an incredible uh, work of art. Oh, my goodness. I, I'm, I'm so thrilled to hear your comments. Uh, so well expressed, my friend. And I must say, too, I couldn't help but notice in the back behind you on the wall, if I'm not mistaken, there is, right, a representation, yeah. artist representation of late spring. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Yeah, late spring and <laughs> my neighbor Toto and Blade Runner. Of course, I got those uh, from a trip to uh, Vietnam and I found like a small shop that uh, had all these like posters on they were printed on like almost like a cloth material. So I, I love them. So I had to buy them. Well done, my friend. Well done. And I, I you said something in your uh, talk about Ozu. And I, I'm now trying to process it in my head because I, I never thought of it that way before. But you said something about how it seems like when you watch an Ozu film, you can get the impression that, of course, a lot of things happen. There are a lot of events, life events, depending on the story and the film that you're watching. But uh, maybe as an overall perspective, one could say that it seems like uh, things will be okay. I think I'm borrowing your words. It feels like things will be okay. And you also said, life goes on. And I was trying in my head when you said these two phrases to connect them, can we connect them or not? And so it, I was thinking, well, if we connect them, then what ultimately does that phrase mean that uh, Whale was talking about, which was things will be okay. And I was thinking, my goodness, what does that mean in our life? When we say things will be okay, do we really mean it's okay? Do we, or it, it, when we say it's okay, is it, automatically a type of positive spin on the meaning of the word okay or it's a sort of resignation of life uh some kind of we're fated to some kind of existence or maybe things will be okay in the sense that we can understand the impermanence of things and that we can transcend our say otherwise sad or tragic experiences in our life because we understand 
it, it there's something beyond or something better. So are there religious connotations to that? I, I was so I was thinking in my head, my goodness, the implications of that profound statement of what the meaning of okay means. It was brilliant, and I was just I I could well done, my friend. I really never thought about it that way until you mentioned it like that. Well yeah, done. Yeah. yeah, and I think like um, like the theme of just moving on in general. Um, you know, Ozu would always use you know uh, passing trains, uh, you know, as a, a recurring image uh, in a lot of his films, and. Uh, you know, it almost marks like the beginning or end of a journey, and uh, in a, in many ways, it was always like also like a link, uh, you know, um, between the old uh, Japan and the new one. So there's always um, like uh, you know the the theme of moving on in general is is huge in the films of Ozu. Um, from a, a, a as, as we were mentioning earlier, like a macro and micro uh, level uh, with Edward Yang, I think Ozu had that as well. Like uh, the, he had bigger themes about, you know, the past generations and the, uh, the, the newer generations and, and on a micro level, like how um, the, the, the things that they were going through, the characters uh, in his films, um, would also have this, uh, you know, transitional um, um, uh, element to them, and uh, I think he even integrated that a lot of, of that within the actual shots of his films, and uh, you know, the corridors and seeing people pass uh, through uh, the the way he tackled. Um, um, you know these micro moments, and somehow made made uh, made the the themes much bigger than um, uh, where where you think the story will go. Uh, and uh, he was a master of that in 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 a lot of his films. And uh, yeah, there's so much to digest in uh, his work. Well done. Uh, well said. Yes, I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. And so uh, you, you've given me yet again more things to think about, as you always do when we have great film discussions like this. And so, uh, my goodness, thank you so much for this. And you've already expressed in discussing these great examples that you bring up, you're, you know, it's, it's very clear that you have this, uh, this uh, such a great perspective on the films that you watch and the films that you admire, and you're able to articulate it so well. I'm marveling at your command over language and your ability to express uh, in in very uh, in very wonderful and. Uh, uh, easy to follow ways, and yet they're, uh, you know, when I say easy to follow, I don't mean that in a demeaning way, I mean that very positively. It's very easy to follow the train of thought, but the trains of thought are always so, so uh, uh, insightful. And so it, it, this type of discussion, of course, reminds me that this is something that you do, right, in terms of your approach to cinema, you know, you are a film enthusiast, but you also are expected to express it in words and in writing, right? In terms of your work. Uh, so I, that now brings me to the question, which is with regard to your work and with regard to your writing about cinema, obviously you do the work that you do now, but what was that, what were those circumstances that started your career as it were? as a critic and a writer about cinema. I mean, you, you talked about your love of cinema and the films that you admired, but then what were those circumstances that uh, turned you into a, a, a critic and writer? I think it uh, started uh, with uh, reading a lot of film reviews. And, uh, you know, sometimes I'd read like film reviews of uh, um, 
and I wouldn't share the same opinion. I, I, I just had that urge to uh, uh, um, uh, try to disagree with that opinion and try to articulate my own uh, argument against that. So uh, at first, uh, I did that on my, um, my website, on my blog, and, uh, and then I started, uh, you know, as I was reading um, a lot of review, reviews, I would also comment on um, a lot of, uh, you know, film blogs and, and the sort. And one of them was, of course, uh, Roger Ebert's uh, film blog. And I think, uh, uh, and I got to know him through, you know, many discussions. Uh, one day he, he clicked like on my uh, name and uh, and that took him to my my website and I and then he commented on uh, some of my film reviews and um, you know at first I was like in disbelief I was like you know there's no way Roger would just commented on um, uh, my film review but then he tried to reach me again through I, I think I didn't answer him at first yeah, I thought it was like someone just you know pulling my leg uh, and then he tried to like. Uh, um it reached me through uh, through uh an email and he asked me to like write a film review for him so you know i had nothing to lose so i sent him a a review and uh and then i you know i, I saw that he, he he explained more about his um uh, um his idea like he wanted to like have uh which i'm very grateful for you know he wanted to have like a global perspective on on film as he mentioned uh and uh, so he started to like uh bring in like different writers from all uh all over the world you know from south korea uh russia or egypt obviously uh the uk and 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 then you know he I was very, very moved by that because, you know, the flow of information um, uh, when it comes to films and, 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 and the, the stuff that we read about movies is usually from um, the West to uh, the, the Middle East and Far East and so on. Um, so, uh, so, and here was this, you know, renowned figure trying to uh, decentralize uh, the flow of information and and uh, and and you know, give us all like this uh, this a platform where we can share our own opinion on films. And I think the internet, uh, you know, helped really decentralize in general this aspect. Of course, obviously, you are um, now um, you know having all these videos about cinema as well, and uh, people from all uh, over the world can can do that as well, you know, uh, before the internet, it was much harder to reach uh, um, um, certain areas and, and countries. And so, uh, so yeah, once, once that happened uh, and I started to uh, write film, uh, you know, pieces, film reviews and film analyses on his website, uh, I started to uh, get, you know, a lot of you know, gigs, uh, uh, like for writing for different uh, film publications, uh, both you know loc locally and uh, um, uh, you know uh, 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 you know in other countries as well. And one once I got like a gig where I wrote a film and they actually translated it into their language and posted. So it's it's been very interesting. Uh, um, uh, journey and writing uh, has always been, you know, a real passion of mine. I've never actually went into this uh, um, thinking that I would, you know, criticize films. That was never my intention. I don't want to criticize work. I simply want to, uh, you know, um, articulate my and share my thoughts on films. And uh, that's uh, really what um, you know, really got me into it uh, uh, from the very start. This is so, uh, I'm, I'm so thrilled by this because I'm not a critic and uh, I'm always fascinated by the, the critic's perspective. And 
Uh, incidentally, before I go on, do you remember the films uh, that you were writing on when you were first uh, working with Roger Ebert? Do you remember um, some examples of those? Yes, I I think I wrote about uh, Das Das Boot the in the the German submarine film. Um, I I wrote about uh, I think I I actually wrote about the exterminating angel as well. I uh, um, monster. I, uh, the there's so many uh, films that uh, I try to remember some of the earlier ones, but uh, so so many. Yeah, um, uh, uh, but yeah, I I I I tend to write about the films that uh, um, I think I wrote also about Hitchcock's Psycho, and that was a very long piece. I did like a very in-depth analysis of uh, of that one where like I I remember having so many different notes a ton of notes and I would you know watch the film you know shot for shot and try to analyze um um the whole sequences in 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 that film but uh uh yeah um so many films and uh, hopefully many more <laughs> yes indeed Indeed, my friend. And may I ask, when you approach, uh, say, writing a particular piece of uh, film criticism, for example, what are some of those points or examples of points that you feel are important to express or to try to talk about when you approach a particular piece of writing? I think uh, I think it's very different from uh, from one film to another. Um, like uh, you you could watch. It's impossible, for example, to like discuss you know a street car named Desire without talking about the acting. Um, so some of them are like really um, uh, almost like. Sh- show reels of uh, uh, you know acting acting performances at uh, different films you'd uh, you'd have to mention you know the cinematography so i think what really it chooses um the pinpoints are aren't chosen by you as much as they're chosen by the film that you're watching so uh, um it, it becomes almost too big to ignore so you start you find yourself writing about it uh, um as you uh, you know finish watching the film there's no, uh, you find yourself uh, but i generally like to um have a broader uh more a conversational uh way of uh discussing the film so uh i really like to think of uh, the intentions of why the film was made and uh and the themes that really either hit home or um, or didn't for me, and uh, uh, yeah, and w- within that within that discussion, of course, I, I like to you know you know of course give credit to whenever credit is due if it's the cinematography or the art direction or the acting, uh, the directing you know the art department or even like the the stunt work you know something so this is the stunt work in a lot of films don't get mentioned uh, a lot and i um there's you know there's always something that you can say but it's always dictated by the film itself as opposed to um like having like a formula of how to uh, um uh write about a certain uh film now, I respect that approach very much, and that makes a lot of sense to me because each film is different, potentially, anyway. And so it makes sense to try to approach it on those terms to the extent that you're able to. That, that makes a lot of sense to me. In your work, thinking back on all the films and all the work that you have 
have written. What are some examples of those pieces that you are especially proud of? What, uh, say, works that you've written would, for example, uh, from your point of view, be, uh, say, uh, the, the, the things that you're proud of, maybe they best represent your approach to film criticism or film reviews? Do you have any examples from your past work? Um, uh, the Thing, I really like the piece I wrote about uh, The Thing. Um, and, uh, you know, recently I, I, I wrote about uh, Harakiri as well. And uh, I think it was, the, the Thing and Harakiri were the most liked film reviews that uh, I wrote so far. Um, I remember earlier, maybe uh, in, you know, 10 years ago, I, I wrote about Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. And uh, for some reason, a lot of people go back to that review and I still receive comments uh, on the review as well. Um, when I read it nowadays, I, you know, I constantly have the urge to change um, uh, the way it's, it's, it's some some of the things that uh, the way I articulate I, I you know my opinion uh, but I think you know at the end of the day uh, uh, if you look back at some of your work and you want to change this that only you know means um, that you you're improving or something so uh, um, so I just let it be and but yeah I think th these are the ones that uh, that come to mind at the moment you mentioned so then that you're writing on the thing and then you're writing on the film uh, uh, Harakiri. And so yeah. what was it specifically or what were some examples as to why you are particularly proud of those particular writings that you did? Um, I think just when, when you know, there's, there's it's, I don't think it's a coincidence that uh, both of them are um, reviews that I've written very recently. And I think the more I look back, the more I, uh, uh, you know, feel like I would like to adjust things or something, you know, like we were mentioning earlier, you know, that you're, you change as a human being, uh, you, your film experience changes. So, uh, uh, so the, you, the, the most recent stuff I write is usually the, 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 the the stuff I feel most um, uh, like like I agree with most uh, as opposed to uh, maybe reading something I wrote like five or ten years ago and um, you, you know my opinion on it might have evolved a bit more um, but yeah uh, and I I think. I think my it, it's very it becomes very hard for me to write uh, film reviews for the films that I love uh, beyond measure. Uh, I think which is one of the reasons why I never actually wrote about uh, Jaws, for example. Uh, I just feel like I wouldn't have the words to actually express how much I, I love that film. Uh, you know, I try to do that with the thing. Um, but uh, I think I, I, the, I, the only way I actually, you know, gave myself the courage to actually write about the film was tackling it from a, uh, uh, from the standpoint of viewing it post uh, the pa pandemic and so on and sharing some of my thoughts on that. So, uh, and, and surprisingly, I was very surprised by, uh, you know, um, you know, or, or moved by, you know, how it was received, you know, even the uh, one of my, you know, my, uh, my happiest days was, you know, seeing when the Criterion channel actually reposted that review on their website. And I was so, uh, uh, you know, excited, I instantly became like a kid. And it made me hope that one day, maybe, you know, they'd uh, actually release uh, that film as well. And, I really hope they do, you know. And uh, on that occasion, uh, you could write the essay. <laughs> that would be really cool. 
yes, yes. Write it or or for for uh, the, uh, the 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 provide the the writing yeah, yeah. Of the booklet. Yes. Oh, that would be. No, there are so many more uh, uh, knowledgeable uh, writers out there that can you know uh, do that. Oh, my friend, my friend. Uh, I, I would look forward to that day so much. And so, uh, but that's wonderful. That is absolutely wonderful. And I, I'm so intrigued here. You've mentioned it earlier in our conversation about how you wanted to give yourself a certain amount of time after you see a film, because on the one hand, you, you wanted to get as objective a viewpoint as possible. Also, you had mentioned the other way too, is, is that you could love a film so much, which also in a way might affect how or your ability to write effectively on a particular film, effectively from your perspective, of course. And so that is intriguing to me. Is, is that something that you find uh, is often the case, namely maybe you are, is it, how should I put it? Maybe another way to ask is, is it, is it difficult to write about a film that you really, really love? Yes, it's, uh, it's oftentimes harder to write about the things that we love because there's, uh, um, uh, we find, find ourselves at a loss of words. And, you know, as a film uh, critic, uh, that's exactly the, the tool that you need to express yourself. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, it has happened uh, a few times. I think um, it took me quite a while to actually write about uh, um, Theo uh, Angelopoulos' uh, 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 Landscape in the Mist. Um, but uh, I think I was, uh, I was happy with what I wrote. Uh, I, you know, of course, I, 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 there's always room to, for improvement. And, but uh, that, that was one of the, the film reviews where I really, um, struggled in the process um, because I was, uh, you know, I had so much respect and admiration for that film and I still do, of course, and uh, I would watch it over and over again and uh, it was a huge task, you know, at the end of the day, when you, when, when I write film reviews, the, the, the end goal is always to um, make the person reading that review want to either watch the film again or um, watch it for the first time and for me if I can achieve that uh, with with a film review then I would you know that to me is everything um, to be able to introduce others to films that they would normally not um, discover or read or uh, read about or um, you know uh, films that they wouldn't normally uh, see or get recommended in a dinner conversation, if they can somehow discover that through, if I can have in any way, you know, contribute to even like a small film that would normally never get, you know, that kind of attention by, um, uh, by others, by like other uh, film publications, if you can do, if we can do that through rec film recommendations and articulating how we love that film, that to me is, you know, uh, everything. Wow, I love that so much. Uh, <laughs> yes. Wow. Um, the idea of the purpose behind the writing, and it's, it's, it's of course, uh, multi-purpose, right? It's, of course, the outlet, or one of the outlets through which you are able to express what it is you feel about something. And then also you hope that it is uh, somehow uh, very much interactive on the part of the reader, your readers, your audience. And as you expressed it, the hope that it might uh, enable or permit to, uh, uh, to allow someone to relive that experience or be reminded of the experience of uh, engagement of that film. That is well, very well said, my friend, very well said. And maybe another way to ask 
or another perspective would be, what from your vantage point would be some of those challenges that you feel exist for, uh, uh, for uh, you know, film critics and film reviewers, uh, people who are trying to uh, uh, write about films and a number of films uh, for your audience? What, what, what are some of those challenges that you feel exist uh, in this particular medium? Um, I think, of course, uh, the when when it comes to actually writing on a, 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 a back in the you know when I used to write uh, more extensively than I do now, one of the challenges was always to uh, actually have something um, new to say. You know, uh, with the, there's so much. Uh, it's, it's, you know, there's so much content online and uh, um, film reviews tackling so so many films from different angles and different uh, viewpoints. So it might be quite challenging to actually have something new to say or about why you like a film um, and something that, that, that would differentiate your uh, film review from you know all of the other uh, reviews and and uh, thought pieces that have been written about that film. So that's all always you know something um, uh, that's very challenging whenever you uh, choose to write about a film. And I think I think it became easier for me the the more honest I became with. Um, with just being transparent about uh, how it might have affected me in the context of who I am. Uh, and that's uh, exactly what differentiates me from um, another person or, or, or another writer from the one next to him. It's who we are as individuals. So uh, once you bring that into the process of actually writing a review, it could help in, in making it maybe a, a bit different from, um, uh, you know, the fellow uh, person next to you writing a film review uh, about the same subject matter. Yeah, I think that is, that's very much on point. There is something about type of honesty in uh, film criticism or film reviews, when I read or I watch or I listen to them, one can get a sense immediately, oh, this is an honest take. I'm not sure how else to describe it, but there's this, you can, you can tell, right? You can tell that it feels from the heart, whatever the out eventual outcome might be, they liked it, they didn't like it, or what were the reasons why, right? And that's such an important thing because um, uh, the, these, it, it, you're absolutely right. That's from a, 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 an audience perspective. You know, if I'm reading something, I want to hear about that or I want to read about why this person felt that way. And yeah, that's, and that makes it automatically unique. You're absolutely right. And so, it uh, right because your your take is your take your honest take is your honest take and so and then someone else's honest take is their honest take and so you get many honest takes on a on a film and the more the merrier I say that's that's yeah. uh, that's wonderful I I think you know in this in, I you mentioned of course the pandemic and you mentioned in, in that example of the thing. And your approach to the film, the thing, uh, and the pandemic has the pandemic affected. Well, I suppose it has. It's affected all of us, of course. But how has it affected your cinema viewing and your approach to, say, uh, film writing and film criticism, if at all? Um, you know, the thing I I miss most is, of course, um, going to the movies and and. Uh, sitting in a, 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 a film theater and actually um, seeing a film with an audience. 
you know, I, I keep reading about so many um, articles about the death of cinema or uh, and all these cinemas closing down. Uh, and, you know, they sometimes mention the, you know, streaming services, but I don't think, um, at least I don't think that, you know, the death of cinema is anywhere near and, uh, um, you know, uh, I don't think it's going anywhere, you know. Um, I think it's just a temporary disruption, but it definitely had, in a, you know, it's something that I miss dearly and the pandemic has obviously affected that. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I think that's one of the things that I, I, I miss most. Do you usually watch uh, films on, in cinemas or uh, do you actually um, prefer watching it alone uh, through physical media? Because oh, I've, yeah. I've always, uh, I've always um, tried to balance between both, you know, with uh, certain films I'd like to watch in, um, in, in a packed house and a, a other films that I, I'd watch uh, uh, at home through, uh, you know, DVDs and Blu-rays and so on. Yeah, thank you. Yes. And I can try to answer by means of say an example so one of the last one of the last things i was able to see in a theater before the pandemic situation really hit here uh, one of the last things i saw was the uh, it was scorsese's the irishman because I was able to go to a very small theater in Tokyo where they were showing it, projecting it on the screen. It was not a big screen. It was a, a fairly small, it was quite a small theater, in fact. And it was, it was uh, the, 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 the screen was quite small, but it was a theater. And it was, there was an audience and it was packed, actually. It was a small theater, but it was packed. And it was wonderful to see that work projected like that and to get a sense of it and the feel of it and to the the audience wasn't it, it, you know there, there there wasn't a lot of laughter and it was a pretty quiet audience but uh, my experience is that usually audiences here are are quiet and that doesn't say anything negative about maybe one's uh, maybe audiences uh, 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 viewpoint on a work as they're watching it necessarily, but they tend to be pretty quiet. And still, there was this maybe electricity that I felt, not just by watching the film, but you're right, there was just that atmosphere of being in this audience. I, it was a shared experience. It was still an individual one, but it was a shared experience. And so I miss that. Of course, now it is, uh, it's pretty difficult or now it's quite impossible at the moment to go to the theater there are a number of movies that i'd love to see that i haven't been able to yet but um but I do... it's very it's sorry uh, it's very interesting that you mentioned the irishman because it's you know a uh, you know it's a netflix film and uh, you know um whenever people talk about you know the demise of uh, cinemas I, I i think it's uh they're being misguided by uh, what's happening um, uh, currently because it's you know I remember when I reading like uh, f uh, like f uh, discussions and articles about uh, the, you know the death of cinema when when home video started becoming uh, available back in you know, the 70s and so on. And so whenever there's like a shift happening within the industry, um, that always seems to be a, 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 a fear amongst film viewers. And I don't think we're watching it's a, a demise. I think we're just, you know, in a continental shift uh, within the film industry where, um, streaming services, physical media and cinemas will all start to coexist. Um, 
but I think it's a very interesting uh, subject, you know, especially with uh, uh, how this shift is affecting the types of films that are getting made. You know, I think movies were always uh, made with with the cinema experience in mind. It's it's like that uh, scene in in Tampopo, you know, when the guy breaks the fourth wall and talks to us as as we're sitting in a, a movie theater. I think movies are uh, you know catered to groups of um, peoples, or, or or they used to be cater uh, catered to groups of people. You know, films were made with um, with plus ones and 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 tagalongs in mind, which is which is why a lot of kids films would some sometimes cater to you know grown ups and 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 you know maybe romantic comedies would cater to both um um sexes uh but you know with with streaming services uh the you know it's starting to even the 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 target is becoming very different so you you you're having a, a um, um, people are watching films alone a lot more often, and uh, and and films can be made ex exclusively for a you know a certain uh, demographic or fan base. And I think um, as time goes on, we'll have like different um, uh, like films will be made with different purposes. You know, bigger films will uh, be made with a purpose to be shared uh, amongst a lot of people, whereas more maybe art house films will be um, uh, catered towards a certain dem demographics. And I think that's I think that that's even happening with um, um, with a lot of these boutique labels. You know, and in, in, in many ways they're like art house cinemas and. Uh, uh, they will always have like a loyal fan base, but uh, um, you know it's an interesting uh, subject, you know. And going to the movies um, was always a, uh, like you said, a shared or collective uh, or communal experience. And there's something incredible, you know, incredibly unique about uh, an entire group going through. The same, the exact same emotions uh, at the same time, you know, be it you know, um, you know, laughter or 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 fear or um, for the briefest of moments, you know, uh, we all become one. And and uh, if if film history has taught us anything, uh, it's that you know going to the movies and seeing them with an audience will um will always prevail ah uh, thank you so much for that well that's that is that is uh, uh beautifully stated and very profound i want to thank you so much for that my friend truly yes um this is really wonderful and uh, so I, my goodness, this is, this has been a really, uh, a really lovely discussion. And you have given me so much to consider. And you've given, you've, I'm so uh, thrilled because I've, uh, I've learned so much about you and your background and your approach and the, the inspirations that you had as well as your approach to your work. And I found this to be uh, so utterly, utterly engaging and insightful. So I, I just want to, first and foremost, I want to say thank you so much, Whale, for your uh, sharing with us and sharing with me your great insights, my friend. This has been remarkable, amazing, fantastic, my friend. No, thank you so much for you know, um, um, all always you know sharing all you know different. I, I, I admire you for the same reasons I admire um, Roger Ebert when he first uh, um, um, uh, brought me in. Uh, you know, you like to share as many. Um, uh, uh, 
film reviewers uh, um, and, and their perspective and on your channel. So that to me is, uh, says a lot about who you are as a person and you're very generous with uh, your words and your, your time and uh, you know, the pleasure was all mine, of course. Oh my goodness, I am, uh, I am flattered beyond belief. So uh, <laughs> thank you so much for that. I'm very humbled by your kindness and your really generous words. Um, uh, we must do this again uh, uh, very soon, if that's okay, my friend. Yes, I hope so. I really hope so. Oh, uh, well, this has been uh, so, what a, what a learning experience you have, great learning experience you have provided to me today. Thank you so much. Um, uh, before we go, though, I would like to ask you, um, do you have any, say, film recommendations or any recommendations in general that you'd like to share with me or, and with the rest of us? Are there any films out there in particular that you think are deserving of uh, attention uh, or have struck you in a particular way that you'd like to just uh, uh, quickly share uh, with us and recommend to us? Um, I'll try to mention uh, films that uh, maybe are more recent, maybe, uh, uh, you know, maybe you, you, you might still have been, haven't had time to discover them, but Winter Sleep is a, a great film that uh, I watched and I admired a lot. Happy as Lazaro, um, uh, Once Upon a Time in Anatolia, uh, uh, Dvekmeister Harmonies, uh, the Bellatar film is 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 a film that I, I read I, I actually uh, which reminds me I really need to revisit that film and uh, maybe go through the difficult process of writing about it one day um, and uh, you know um, Loveless uh, per Perfect Blue I'm sure you've seen because of uh, its inclusion in the uh, criterion channel and a collection of course the emperor's the naked army march is on i'm sure you've seen it but if anyone is listening to this and hasn't seen it uh, seen this work please do uh, as well as all of the work by you know kazao hara uh, goodbye cp of course it's you know it's an incredible uh, uh, you know thoughtful and empathetic look at the uh, um, um, people living within the margins of society and uh, yeah I hope uh, that covers it uh, thank you so much uh, for that my dear friend that was thank you yes yes uh, for sharing this with us so um, uh, well Hayri uh, so thank you so much and so uh, one last thing, of course, uh, could you once again uh, let us know where we might be able to find you online or elsewhere? Uh, again, for anyone who is meeting you for the first time and who may be interested to read more about your work, where can people find you uh, online for more uh, discoveries of your work, please? Um, I, you'll find my work on uh, rogereber.com under the uh, far-flung correspondence section uh, on my personal blog, the cinephilefix.com. Uh, and there's also an Instagram um, uh, version of that page. Uh, yeah. Uh, thanks, thanks for letting me share that. And uh, thanks again for your time, Daisuke. It's been a pleasure. Oh, no, the pleasure, believe me, has been all mine, my dear friend. Uh, so uh, uh, what I will do is I will have all of this information included in the description box of this video. And so uh, I hope that people will use those links and read more of your uh, wonderful uh, writings and insights, because uh, and, uh, I really, I really, really mean this. This has been 
such a, a wonderful learning experience. And also, it is always a great honor and pleasure for me to be able to uh, spend time with you and to hear your thoughts about this thing that we love called cinema. And so, well, my dear friend, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Daisuke. And we'll talk very soon. Yes, I hope so. Yes, me too. Me too. Thank you and cheers. Thank you. Thank you.